Okay, uh, welcome everybody to the Cub Scout Summer Fun webinar. This is kind of our kickoff. Uh, so tonight we're going to be going over all of the different fun that our Cub Scouts can have in the council. Um, we will be recording this uh, and we will also be posting the slides as well onto our website. And if you registered, we will of course send this out to you in an email. So we are going to... Our agenda for tonight. So as I said, we're going to talk about camp opportunities for Cub Scouts. What different ones do they have? Um, can they go to more than one? Yes, they absolutely can. We're going to talk about camperships. We're going to deep dive into day camp, Camp Bets, Cub Scout Family Camp, Cub Scout Resident Camp at Owasapi, Renneker Family Camp. So those are our four main ones. Um, we'll deep dive into those. And then we're going to talk about adults at camp. Um, there are some new camping guidelines about adult registration, so we wanted to make sure that we mention those here, um, and you can always ask more questions later. Um, and then Q&A. So we are going to be going through this uh, step by step. If you have questions, please throw them into the chat as you um, have them. Um, Amanda Hugelman, who is our program executive, will be our tech assistant. Please make sure that you're staying on mute. Um, and then also they will be in charge of kind of seeing if we need to answer a question before moving on or if it can wait till the end um because we would like to make sure that we can get all this information in a concise way um for somebody viewing it at a later date but then that q a at the end we will have all of our representatives from these individual camps here to answer those questions for you so i am going to ask those uh representatives here um, to kind of come on, unmute themselves, say their name, and what uh, camp they're with. So, Frank, will you start for us? Right. My name is uh, Frank Tadero. I'm the Council Activities Chairman. Awesome. I think I have Stephanie next. Yes. Hi. I, mean, is, I was like, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, why was this even a consideration? Go ahead, Stephanie. Okay. That's okay. Hi, I'm Stephanie Brockway. I am the volunteer day camp committee chair for the council. Awesome. Uh, Kevin. Helps if I unmute. Uh, <laughs> hello, my name is Kevin Reynos. I am the admin director for Family Camp at Bets in my ninth year, I believe. Awesome. Uh, Sean. Evening, everyone. My name is Sean McQuaid. I'm one of the program directors for Camp Bets Family Camp this year, and I will be in my fourth year here at Camp Bets. <laughs> okay, and I believe uh, Joe Vitti is on. Are you able to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Vitti. I am the camp director at Camp Wolverine Zaxi and also the camp director for our Cub Scouts at Owasapi Adventure this summer. Awesome. Thank you all for being here. I'm glad that we have somebody from every camp representing here tonight. Um, my name is Shelby Knuckles. I am the director of camping services for the Pathway to Adventure Council. So I help oversee these programs. Um, so my contact info will be here later as well. Um, and then Amanda, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Amanda Hubelman. I'm the program executive for the council. Um, in this conversation, I help OBC Day Camp, um, but I, I do um, other activities and advancement and training as well with the council. Awesome. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started with our camp opportunities. Like I said, this will be sent out. Um, this actually came out of a meeting, an activity camp activities camp meeting that we talked about. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of different camps tonight. We've got four big ones that Cub Scouts can take part in this summer. Um, and this is kind of that little matrix for you as a parent or you as a scout leader to kind of take back to your, pal your packs and see what works for everybody. So we're going to talk about our day camps. There are seven opportunities for day camps. They happen on a Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they're in your local area. Sleeping accommodation is not there because it is a one day. Uh, meals are not included. Um, there's not aquatics activities, but there is target and range sports. Um, that is your BB guns, your archery, and your slingshots. Um, there is an occasional location, depending on where we are in the Chicago area, that may not let us do that. Um, but there, that information is on the website as well. 
Um, and as we kind of get down these, they kind of increase in nights and in tent camping and different things like that. So we've got Vets Cub Scout Family Camp. Um, that is five opportunities there. Are, so there are five weekends, three days, two nights, Friday through Sunday uh, for you and your family or you and your pack to go out um, and enjoy all the fun things at Camp Vets. Um, and it is a bring your own tent. Uh, meals are included, uh, which is always a plus. Um, there are aquatics activities and there are target and range sports. Cub Scout resident camp. So you're ramping it up again. Um, there are two sessions. However, there is one session which is available for all Cub Scouts. Um, so Tiger through uh, going into Arrow of Light. So going into fifth grade. Um, and then there is one for only Weeblos and AOLs, which is your fourth and fifth graders. Um, they are four day, three night. There are, the first one is Sunday through Wednesday and the Weeblos and AOLs is Wednesday through Saturday. Canvas tents uh, are available uh, when you're registering, it'll ask, or you can bring your own tent. Uh, meals included, lots of aquatics and lots of target range sports. Um, and something that kind of gets forgotten a little bit, but we wanna make sure you know it's available is we have what we call Rineker Family Camp. It is also at the Owasabi Scout Reservation right where your Cub Scouts are going to be at Rebs, uh, at resident camp or where your older kids are gonna be at Scouts BSA camp at Wolverine or Blackhawk. Um, so throughout the summer for seven weeks, you can rent a cabin out there, um, Sunday through Saturday, individual nights are available too. Rent a cabin, cabin has up to six people. Uh, meals are not included, but you do have appliances to cook inside the cabins. And then you can sign on to do all the fun stuff out there. Uh, while your kids are already camping out there or when you bring your family out separately. So that's kind of the a brief overview. We've got some pictures, we've got some more links and things. Um, so we will continue on. Camperships, so super important. This link will also be available later. However, we do have camperships available uh, for Pathway to Adventure Council youth attending a Pathway to Adventure Council camp. So our camps tonight that we're talking about, day camp, Cub Scout resident camp, and Bet's camp, family camp, can all receive a campership if you fill this out. Um, we do require that they be registered in the Pathway to Adventure Council and in good standing. Um, you have to attend a Cub, uh, Pathway to Adventure Council summer camp, uh, and you have to be recommended by your unit leader or parent or guardian. We do ask that a parent, it, anyone can fill this out. The parent can fill this out for the youth or the leader can fill this out for the youth. We just ask, and it does ask in the application as well, we ask that you notify the other person that you're doing this. One, so that we aren't doubling up in case you're both doing it. Or two, that your unit leader doesn't go ahead and pay for that scout when you've already uh, applied for a campership. Um, so application deadline is Monday, April 15th. Um, and then we will notify you of the award uh, Tuesday, April 30th, so you can pay the remainder. Um, please be aware that camperships do not usually exceed 50% of the fee. Um, so we very much encourage um, fundraising, so popcorn sales, things like that. Um, if the unit can help out um, and what can the parent pay? Um, so please be aware that that deadline is April 15th. If there is any money left over, we will continue to um, it, give these out as money allows. Hey, I'm gonna toss it over to Amanda. Thank you, Shelby. Um, so Shelby gave us the overview and I'll start us off now getting a little bit more in detail about our Cub Scout Day Camp um, program that we are offering at seven locations um, on seven Saturdays this summer, starting the 1st of June. And then we go through the 10th of August. Um, these are, across our council. Um, and so you have many opportunities. We've had people last year come to uh, to multiple day camps. Uh, you're welcome to choose what works best for you. Um, but these are the, the locations that we have um, for our day camp sites this summer. Next. Uh, just a quick overview. Well, I guess I should have mentioned, you can go back one slide. <laughs> You can see our theme is Cub Scout Games. Um, so think high energy, think our, our summer Olympics kind of vibes, but um, yeah, we're, we're really gonna be bringing 
that uh, teamwork and in a little bit of friendly competition and energy um, into the summer. Our, our program team is uh, putting together all sorts of activities to get us running around and, and thinking like, you know, the, uh, the outdoors men and, and women and the athletes that we are. Um, okay, so just to, to make sure that I got the theme, now you can go forward. Um, a little bit of an overview of, of what day camp looks like. The, the, the scouts come with their parents, with their units, um, with their packs, they show up in the morning. We'll do a brief ceremony to, to brief anybody on, uh, safety, uh, concerns for the day and, and what you need to know. We will, um, as Shelby mentioned, lunch meals aren't provided. We have you bring your lunch. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that when you're there in the morning and then, we get going. Um, there are six stations throughout the day. We'll do target and range sports. So depending on the site, um, BBs are the only one that, that may not be offered depending, uh, the city has, has restrictions, but if not, you'll, you'll do slingshots, you'll do archery, um, to get you on the, our target and ranges. Uh, we have STEM activities, we have games, handicraft, um, other types of crafts. And so you'll run through six stations through the day uh and we'll we'll wrap up at the end with a closing ceremony and get you on your way all tuckered out um scouts will well you can go to the next slide and, and we'll talk through um for the the price of 35 dollars this year for scouts siblings and friends uh, you will receive a t-shirt a patch and anything that is created at the camp itself um, last year, our scouts brought home toolboxes, and I've seen them used in all sorts of ways. Um, but the the deadline to register is the Monday before each session um, to make sure that you are uh, that, that you're ready to go for the Saturday. Next slide, please. These are QR codes that will take you. Oh. These are QR codes that will take you. Um, the one on the left goes to the council day camp uh, webpage, and that talks through everything that I just mentioned. And it's got a leader guide as well to to cover some more details about just the the finer details that you'll need to know going into uh, into the the weekend. Um, and then the QR code on the right is takes you straight to the registration page. These are our contacts for day camp. Um, you heard from Stephanie and Frank, and they'll be on at the end for any uh, more specific questions. Yes, any and all can attend day camp, um, very important. We encourage you to bring your friends and hope that they join scouting with you. All right, so we are going to move on to Camp Bets Spy Agency. So this is your Camp Bets family camp uh, theme for this summer. So Camp Bets Spy Agency, and you can't really tell by the way that this graphic is, but it is Camp BSA. Um, so they are doing some really cool things over on the Camp Bets uh, family camp Facebook page. Um, if one of the bets guys want to throw that link into the chat, that would be great. Um, because every Tuesday they're talking about a different spy, whether fictional or real. Um, and then they're also throwing back to all of their old patches on Thursdays. Um, so make sure you're over on their Facebook page. Lots of great information. They are doing five sessions. So that is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and Last, I just got an update. They are at 70% capacity. Um, and I believe session one is on a wait list. Um, so this is very popular. Uh, we encourage you to get registered now. Um, we'll kind of talk about some of the different ways you can register in a minute, um, but this is always packed and guaranteed to sell out. Um, so make sure you secure your spot for uh, family camp out at Camp Bets this summer. Uh, family camp mission statement. So their vision of family camp is to increase Cub Scouts to Scouts BSA crossover. Um, so that is when your Cub Scouts go from fifth grade to sixth grade into the Scouts BSA program. 
by eliminating parent and scout hesitancy regarding the camping element of the Scouts BSA program. So we talked about day camp and that's a great introduction for your new scouts and for your scouts that just love to do all those different activities. Um, camp bets gets a little bit more in depth and you get that overnight aspect um, and they get to be with their pack. And so it kind of just continues to increase so that they are ready for scouts BSA when they get there. Um, over the course of the weekend, there will be uh, family friendly camping. Uh, you'll be doing cub target and range sports. Um, there will be certified aquatic elements, um, dining hall and food service. So as we said, meals are included here. Um, so you just have to show up and have fun. Uh, themed program and campfire elements. I'm so excited to see what all camp game that they're gonna do throughout the weekend themed as the Bet Spy Agency. Um, and then all provided by adult and youth staff from within the council. So they will have staff out there doing this um, all the programs for you so that you can hang out with your kids. Um, we, the focus of family camp is not advancement, but it providing a fun and memorable outdoor experience uh, and a positive parent and cub interaction with an older scout program. Uh, so they will be having lots of fun out at Camp Vets this summer. Kind of an overview of your weekend. So it does uh, check-in starts later in the afternoon on Friday as you all get off of work and get out to camp. Um, so check in and campsite set up. You'll have an orientation overview of what's gonna be happening and then there'll be an evening program. Uh, Saturday morning, we'll be doing your flag raising. You will get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and you'll be doing assigned program rotations um, during the morning and afternoon. Um, break and campfire prep after dinner. You will lower the flags and then you will have your campfire program uh, where songs and skits are are performed by you all, as well as the staff out there too. Uh, and then you get your campsite time. And I'm gonna assume treats has something to do with something sweet made over a fire, which is always delicious. Uh, and then Sunday morning flag raising ceremony, continental breakfast will be available. A scout vespers will be available. Uh, and then we will send you all on your way. So that is kind of the overview of the weekend. Look at everybody having fun over there uh, in our photos. Okay, lots to see on here. Take a picture. However, like you said, we will post these. This is all on the website as too. 2024 camp fees. So scouts and siblings, five to 15 or $95 through May 31st at 11.59 p.m. Uh, adults and siblings, 16 years and older are, are 55. Uh, and then siblings zero to four are free. Um, starting June 1 at 12 a.m. is when that late fee goes into effect. Um, and so it becomes 105 for scouts and siblings and 65 for adults and siblings there. Um, however, they have introduced something new this year, which is our group registration. So we understand that Camp Bets is filling up right now, but as a pack, you may not have collected $95 from every single scout that needs to go with you. So that's where the group registration comes in. Um, with a $15 per person deposit, you can hold your spot in your desired session until April 30th at 1159. Okay, so that means that you would pay $15 for everybody you know is coming not the 95, not the 55, but all 15 um, to reserve your spot. And then you would have completed your payment by May 1st uh, in full to re save those spots. Um, so that is a way that you can go ahead and save your spot now instead of waiting. Um, and we do know a lot of people have done that as well. Um, if you pay in full before May 1st, um, that $15 just gets cut off how much you owe us. So um, you would owe us $80 instead of another 95. So that's kind of how that works. And you go to the registration page here in a second. Uh, there, This is all written out in a policy as well. Um, so that information is there for you too. Um, something to note is that every camp has different re um, different form requirements, things like that. Um, BETS does require that every person um, participating, including adults, needs to bring a BSA annual health and medical record, part A and B, so B is one and two, um, and that includes a copy of your insurance card. 
Um, that is in the leader guides as well, but I just wanted to throw it out here so it's all on one page. These are your links. As we said, the Camp Bets Family Overview is the first one. So that's the web page that's going to have all of this information on it and any updates are going to go there. Uh, your Camp Bets Family Camp Registration is going to take you straight to the registration page so you can go ahead and start your group registration right now. Um, these are available at the end of the uh, slides as well. And then our 2024 family camp contacts. So you got to meet uh, Kevin and Sean. So Kevin is your camp admin director. Sean is your family camp program co-director. And then Scott is your other family camp program co-camp director. Um, and so they do have a contact email that they all check. Um, so if you have any questions, send them that way. Uh, this next email address is super important for anything camping anything outdoor adventure, anything camping, but specifically that what we're talking about tonight. Uh, ptac.camping at scouting.org goes to our outdoor adventure help desk, which is um, monitored by Kathy, who is amazing. Um, send your questions there and she will be able to answer them or she will be able to send you um, to the correct person uh, instead of you trying to root around and find who you need to go to. Uh, my contact email is also down here as well, um, and I will do my best to answer your questions uh, and or get you in the right direction as well. Okay. Amanda, do we have any questions that we need to answer right now? No. Okay. Awesome. We're going to move on to a Wasapee Cub Scout resident camp. Okay. So like we said, we've been kind of building up. This is now your four day, three night uh, adventure right here. Uh, session one is open to all ranks, Sunday through Wednesday. So July 28th through July 31st. Uh, and then your Weeblos and Arrow of Lights only is gonna be July 31st through August 3rd. Um, and they're gonna get to do pool swimming, BB guns, boating, steam, crafts. They're gonna get to do all the fun things, um, but they're gonna get to do it at a bigger property. Um, so this is on the Owasapi Scout Reservation uh, in Michigan, and so there is also an active Scouts BSA camp happening at the same time, and there are a lot of interactions among um, the different sub camps at Owasapi. So your Weeblos and Arrow of Lights and your Cub Scouts will actually get to interact with the older Scouts there as well. Um, so typical day is going to look like flag ceremony, uh, 745 breakfast, which we'll talk about food in a second. You're going to get your morning program in. Um, like I said, they're going to rotate through those different ones we just talked about. Lunch and rest period, afternoon program, and then dinner flags and dinner at six, and then an evening program, whether that is open programming or the staff putting on a fun camp-wide game um, and or the closing and opening campfires. And then 10 p.m. is your bedtime there. So welcome to the big top. So when we're thinking about food here, they do eat cafeteria style under the dining tent at Wolverine. Um, field uniform, that is going to be your, what some people still call the class A, um, but your field uniform, um, so your blue or your tan, uh, is highly encouraged for dinner and flags. Our staff will be wearing them. Uh, and then a camp menu has been designed by a certified dietitian. Um, and those will be available on the resource page as well. Um, and if you have any dietary concerns, um, those are, we have a dietary uh, person on staff out there all the time so that they can make sure that uh, your kids are getting fed um, correctly. Okay, Cub Scout Resident Camp fees. So through June 14th at 11.59 p.m., scouts are $185 and adults and den chiefs are $125. Uh, den chiefs must be registered um, in a pack, um, so just make sure you remember that one. Uh, and then after or on June 15th, scouts are $210 and adults and den chiefs are $150. Um, this is here, and we will also talk about it later, too, so just a little... Hint here, if you're registering as an individual scout, a parent must attend camp with them. If you are registering as a den or a pack, then adult registration requirements are in place. So you must have two registered adult leaders. 
um, for every one to four, for the first 10 and then a one to four ratio following that. Um, we will talk a little bit more about that in depth as it relates to bets as well. Um, but tigers uh, must be a one to one, so they must bring a parent with them. Needed forms. As I said, every camp is going to have different needed forms. However, as you progress, you may have noticed as we progress in these and they get a little bit more, they get longer, they get more paperwork. Um, so you will need the parts A and B of the medical form, uh, which includes a copy of your health insurance card, just like we talked about at BETS. Um, if you're attending as a DIN or a PAC, you're going to want a roster of the youth and adults. Um, Proof of unit insurance for those that are non-PTAC units attending as a DEN. Um, and then this is something that is a little bit more in depth than it is at BETS, is that up at Owasapi, we do require a central registry clearance for all scouters and adults 21 and over. So that is a separate form um, that is basically a background check through the state. Uh, and so that is available on our resources page. Um, and we can talk about that more in depth um, offline um, but that is walked through on the resource page as well as the leader guide when that goes live. You will get lots of reminders about that, um, but because we are licensed up there, we do require that registry clearance for all scouters over 21. Uh, and then all adults must have current YPT certificates printed and turned in at check-in. Um, and so those are, will be reminders as you get registered. Those reminders will continue to come out from our staff uh, making sure that you are aware of those and get those turned in. So these are our links, your resident camp overview. That will take you straight to the uh, big overview page that has everything we just talked about and in more in depth with links. Um, and then your camp uh, resident camp registration is over here as well. And then your 2024 camp re resident camp contacts, Joe Vitti, who we heard from is your camp director over at Wolverine. Uh, and then Nicholas Nick uh, is the reservation director. So he and Joe are out there all summer running Scouts BSA programming, and then they shift uh, and go into some fun programming for our Cub Scouts out there. And I didn't even have time to add this on to here, but I did get the theme, so I'm going to give it to you. Uh, they have just come up with the theme, and it is going to be Cub Scouts in Space. Um, so the staff are excited about that. They love going out with all the Scouts BSA kids, um, but having the opportunity to jump into a theme they're excited about. And so again, it's going to be Cub Scouts in Space is what uh, your Scouts can look forward to out at uh, Owasapi for Cub Resident Camp. Okay. Uh, Amanda, is there anything we need to answer right now? There are definitely a few questions about camp. I think we can save uh, s most of them for the end, but one to clarify here says, can the central registry clearance be, su be submitted at any time or does it need to be closer to camp time? That is a very good question. And that I do not know. I don't know how long it is good for. So I'm gonna write that one down and I will get you an answer for that one uh, when we send out the slides. Okay. And then I've got, got an eye on the others. So we'll have some answers uh, at the end. Awesome. Okay, and this is our Last, but certainly not least, uh, Cub Scout program. Um, and this is a family-wide program as well. Um, so Renneker Family Camp. Renneker, Camp Renneker sits on the same property as um, Cub Scout Resident Camp, so Camp Wolverine. Um, so this is out on the Owasapi Scout Reservation. Uh, and Renneker Family Camp is for your whole family to come out. They will do programming for four-year-olds all the way up to adults. Um, but essentially, you get to rent a cabin. Um, and so the family can rent a cabin for up to six people uh, for $500 uh, for the week. Um, if you do come out on a single night, you know you can't make a whole week, you can do it $100 a night. But you do get that discount by coming out on Sunday and leaving on Saturday. Um, so that does run um, next to our scouts bsa summer camp so they start on what is week one of scouts bsa camp so session one you can rent starting june 16th um, and then that last session session seven july 28th through august 3rd is actually 
when Cub Resident Camp is happening. And something super important here is that if you rent a cabin, if you and your family rent a cabin at Renneker for $500, but you have a scout that is either a camper at Owasapi or a camper at Cub Scout Resident Camp, then you get $100 off of your rental for the week. Um, and your kid gets to have everything they wanna do at their other camp, but still you get to see them having all that fun as well. Um, one thing here is like we said, it is uh, food is not included. Um, so you bring your own food. There is kitchen uh, kitchens in each of the cabins. Each cabin has up to room for six people. Um, the bathrooms are shared um, in the middle of all the cabins. Um, so there are showers and flush toilets and then there are kibos around as well. Um, so more information about Renneker can be found here. Um, so a great way for you to get out with your family. Um, and then you can sign on to do some of those more high adventure things with your older kids. Um, and like I said, programming from ages four all the way through adults, uh, our staff will be out there uh, for you at that time. Okay, so this is a big one. I don't know how many questions are in the chat right now about this, um, but this is something that we are gonna be reiterating to you multiple times. There are new, um, not new, they started September of last year, um, but this will be kind of the first full summer of them. So adult registration and tenting. This does not apply to day camp. Um, this is going to apply to Betts and this is going to apply to Owasapi, uh, resident camp. So a parent or legal guardian attending Cub Scout camp with their own child and not with a pack is not required to be a registered adult in the BSA. Um, a camp may require that they have youth protection training. So Owasapi does require that go on, take the training, give them their form. But if you are attending camp with your child, um, you are not required to be a registered BSA leader. The one caveat I will put here is that under these new guidelines, a grandparent must be a registered adult leader, um, unless that grandparent is the legal guardian of that child. Um, but a grandparent um, who is just attending in place of a parent must be a registered adult leader before camping overnight with a Cub Scout. Um, so if you are coming out, just you and your kid, um, you do not need to be registered. Just be aware you may need to have youth protection training. So if a DIN or a PAC are attending together, uh, a minimum of two BSA registered adult leaders, 21 and over, those are paid positions, uh, are required with a minimum supervision ratio of one adult per four scouts, okay? So if you are attending, um, this should not say 10. Um, so I apologize for that. It should say 12. So 12 scouts in the pack are attending. They are required to have three registered adult leaders. Um, so one to four up to the first 10. I know that's super confusing. So I apologize it is not written out correctly. Um, but so 10, you have a pack of 10, then you must have two adult leaders. If you are bringing 12, you must have that additional person to go the one to four ratio, okay? So anyone over that you need to have, um, they need to be registered BSA members. Um, if a female scout is in attendance, then one of the registered leaders must be female, 21 and over. Um, and then all tiger scouts entering first grade must have a parent with them. Um, that parent does not need to be registered in the BSA if they are acting as the parent to that Tiger Scout. Um, the differentiation here is that if that parent is also, um, if that parent is also supervising other kids, then they need to be a registered leader. Um, so, and then tenting. Um, just a reminder, scouts may tent with scouts, other scouts of their same gender, uh, with no more than two years of age in difference in age. Um, no scout may share a tent with an adult who is not their parent. An example, they can't share a tent with their grandparent unless that grandparent is their legal guardian. All right, and that brings us to the end of our presentation and our Q&A session. As I said, here's all the links to the overviews. You can get to the registrations from here as well. Um, but we are going to go into some of our questions. 
Mm. Amanda, did you see the question about how do you sign up for other day camps to help the ranges? Yeah, yeah, and Stephanie um, sent the link in there, but Stephanie, if you want to talk about um, how we can have volunteers join us at day camp, that would be wonderful. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it honestly, for any of the, um, for day camp and then even for camp vets um, and, and to some extent, um, a WASP, like these camps only happen um, with a little help from our friends. So um, we're really, really excited to be um, able to welcome anybody who is is willing to come out um, and, and be a helper, um, especially at day camp. Um, for day camp, we have a Google form that I put in the meeting chat um, that you can fill out and you can pick um, what camps or multiple camps um, that you're willing to help with and what activities that you're willing to help with as well. It also will ask if you are already Range Master certified or have some other um, training that that qualifies you for, for shooting sports. It does ask you on there to provide that. Um, uh, that information. And if you are interested in helping specifically with shooting sports and you don't have your range master training or NRA certificate, then um, we do have one more scheduled uh, Cub Scout range master training coming up. Um, you can find that on the council calendar and get signed up and get um, range master certified prior to all of our day camps starting. And if that date doesn't work out with you, feel free to reach out to me. I also put the uh, PTAC day camp at gmail.com email address in the chat as well. My personal email address is in this presentation too. And we are happy to try to make something work and to set up another session if there are interested parties and that date doesn't work. So, um, but Honestly, all volunteers are welcome. We need people to help with program areas, people to help with registration and setup, um, people to just go around and just be extra hands. So uh, if you have a Saturday and you want to have a great amount of fun, um, then definitely share your time with day camps. We would totally appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, so next one, will a WASPI summer camp feature all the new program adventures? So this is still in the works, as you know, that this stuff is still coming out and it hasn't dropped yet. So our staff hasn't even, our summer camp staff hasn't got a chance to dig through it yet. Um, so as new programs are added and as the program kind of gets hammered out, we will be sharing more of that on our Facebook page as well. Um, I got your, so can the central registry clearance be submitted at any time or does it need to be closer to camp? I have that written down. I'm going to figure that out for you and we'll send that out uh, when I send these out uh, to everybody that registered. Fishing. It, who's offering fishing? <laughs> Anybody? We have it at Owasapi. Woo! <laughs> okay. And, and you might just get some dry land fishing because, mm -hmm. um, you know, there there's some uh, sailing that happens at the Olympics. And if we're trying to channel that, you might fish while you're sailing, um, yeah. probably not in the Olympics, but um, <laughs> we might do some dry land. We're trying to work that in somewhere. Currently at BETS, we do not have fishing offered as a time slot. That is something we're working on but there is requirements to separate our swimming area and fishing so we don't accidentally hook the wrong person. So uh, that is a future plan, but not currently at bets at this time. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay, clarifying the parent pack, Kevin. Just uh, to be sure, most, historically, most of our participants come even though they may register with the group or their pack may coordinate the registration if a parent is bringing a child you are and you're not in charge of another child you don't need to be a leader right so if you're bringing your even if you are the scout master but you're bringing your kid and you're only in charge of your kid you do not you you're technically a parent the there are times in the history where we had a couple but it's definitely something that happens more often at like say the event the resident camp where 
your unit will go together with unit leadership to be in charge of the other scouts. So if for some reason at bets, there are youth that are coming that do not have their parents with, and they are underneath the charge of a leader, then we need to maintain the leadership ratios as shall be described. Or Amanda, I'm sorry, which one of those? But as long as we're, if everyone has the adult partner parent type thing, we do not need to worry about the ratios. But at family camp, the more the merrier. We'll take additional parent. We, I think we had five, gener we had three generations one year. You know, grandpa has come along with for the fun, the siblings and the younger scouts. We, we take anyone essentially. But as long as we have a legal guardian with a child, that it is the parent structure for our camp. We do ask that you take YPT training if you're not a leader. If you are a leader, we do ask that you do show that, share that with us as a requirement. But if you're coming as a parent, and it's a, this is a less than a 72-hour or less camp, we encourage you to be YPT trained and provide that, but it's not required at this point. Thank you. Well, appreciate then, it. I guess uh, one more question, Kevin. Do you require Baloo training for these camps? <clears throat> As we are a family camp, and it is a family orientated less than 72 hour camp, Baloo is not required. It's encouraged. Keep in mind, these are minimums, right? If you have a Baloo trained person in your uh, pack, by all means, if they can make it out, it's great. It only enhances the experiences, gives you guys a little bit more knowledge of how things will work and may be able to enhance the weekend for you. It's strictly not required. Um, because we are less than 72 hours and it's a council provided camp, you're not required to have Baloo. Awesome. Yes, council provided right there. So you do not um, need to be Baloo trained. Like you said, it's only going to make your experience better, um, but we are not checking for that either. Um, in case you haven't read the chat, there is a fishing derby coming up in August uh, for Pathway to Adventure. So it should be on the calendar as well. So if you are looking for more fishing opportunities, there is one on the calendar. Uh, and for Cub Scout camp, will emphasis this year be on elective adventures rather than required? Um, is Joe still on? Yep, I'm here. Uh, so the question was, for Cub Scout camp, will emphasis this year be on elective adventures rather than required, or are you going more um, non-advancement? Yeah, so uh, obviously there's a new uh, new Cub Scout program coming out, and as soon as we have our hands of that, we will, we will have a better understanding of that. Uh, our, our goal typically is to balance uh, uh, is to balance things that you you that are unique to camp, right? Like like our aquatics opportunities, with things that are um, things that you know scouts might want to experience or might be helpful for advancement. So we try to strive for a balance between between advancement and, and activity. Um, and when when we have our our activity guide, we'll have a better understanding of exactly what that balance will be. But we we do try to do a balance. There is advancement as part of our program. Thank you, Joe. Okay. I believe that is, we love elective advancement. Yes, definitely. Okay, so I believe that is the end of our questions for now. Um, <coughs> what ages are allowed for a WASAP? So a WASAP is allowed for your, um, the first session is going to be your scouts going into first grade. So those are going to be your, was your kindergart kindergartners, they're going to be going into first grade next year. Um, so first graders um, into your scouts that are going into fifth grade. So anyone that is an arrow of light now uh, should be attending summer camp at a scouts BSA camp with their new troop um, by next summer. Um, so first through fifth grade. <clears throat> 